so it is now 6.04 p.m. on Monday, February 26th. I'd like to call the Woodbury Select Board meeting to order. Do we have any adjustments to the Select Board agenda for this evening? Well, it sounds like Brandy had something for under the... Uh, Road Commissioner's report. What? That's okay. Well, that, that can okay. be during her report. Okay. That's fine. Okay. Uh, we're in the process of approving bills and payroll orders. Those will be done um, by end of, uh, well, by tomorrow. Uh, the minutes from the February 12th meeting have been reviewed and approved and are now back to the town clerk. And we're now open for public comment, please. Yeah. Everybody's playing pickleball. Oh, is that what all those cards are? <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Mm. Hearing no public comment. Um, Mrs. Durkee, can we have the town clerk's report, please? I have been busy with elections. I we bet. have. Um, Tuesday night is the annual meeting for the elementary schools, which will be at Hedwig Elementary School. Wednesday is the annual meeting for Hazen, be at Hazen. And Thursday night is our pre-town meeting, will be here at the elementary school. Saturday is our town meeting, starting at 10 o'clock at the school. And Pam and I will be testing voting machines. Don't know how long it's going to take because I don't know how many little errors we will come across. Hmm. But we're starting tomorrow. Cool. And oh. then the presidential school vote will be here at the school on Tuesday the 5th. Oh, it's at the school. Okay. Yes. And somebody said a, saw a note had been put out that Tuesday's meeting was going to be in the town hall. So I'll put up one of the sandwich boards to tell them it's at the school. Thank you. Huh. I appreciate that. So do you want me to take um, minutes at the town meeting? Or sure. You, or would you and Pam want to do that? I, I'm fine with doing it. If Pam is going to be signing people in. Okay. All right. Yep. So. And um, Hardwick TV will be there also. Okay. All right. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, well, I'm happy to do it if, it's, if it would be helpful. But. Okay. Okay. Yep. All right. Thank you, Michael. Mm. And I believe that's what I have. Anything that you need from us to make sure that this goes as smoothly as possible? Show up. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, yeah, that's thanks, Paul. Something. Appreciate it, Paul. <laughs> no, I was laughing at that. I just said how it's working smoothly. <laughs> I said as smoothly as possible. Yeah. <laughs> There's a caveat in there. All you gotta do is do something and something will break or not work right. Uh, do you need any help with anything that you can think of at the moment? Right at the moment, no. Okay. You got all your ballot clerks? Yes. Wonderful. I do. Thank you. Yep. And we're all expected to be there Thursday, I'm assuming, right? Well, I haven't been to a pre-town meeting before, but. It's up to you. Okay. Yeah, it's a good thing. I, you know, I'll plan on usually it. not a lot of people show up. Okay. But the thing that it's you will have to be at is Tuesday night. Oh. For the counting when the polls close. Mm -hmm. When the polls seven. close at mm -hmm. 7. We all have to be there. Oh, okay, so show up at 7 yep. on Tuesday? Yes. Okay. Yep. No, you are. So, but, so it's that's. Just for the presidential. Okay. The school will be taken to the elementary school in Hardwick. So the BCA will need to like feed the ballots into the machine. No, but remember we have to go through and make sure we, we have as many to, ballots as what right. we have to do a manual right. count to yeah. make sure that we're yeah. we're checking check it for the yeah. computer. Yep. Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sounds good. I think that's it. All right. Thank you, Mrs. Turkey. Hmm. Uh, Ms. Smith, Sorry, could you do the to town treasurer's report, okay. please? Okay. 
uh, reports in front of you, balance sheet, financial statement due to do from. Over the last two weeks, we took in about $932.30 in cash receipts. Um, for delinquencies, $1,665.56. Payroll the last two weeks, $10,674.47. Accounts payable, $19,165.76. Today I transferred $24,000 to cover bills. Goodies mm -hmm. um, I want to go over. So, I tweet our made some revisions. This is going to be the mowing Thank you. Uh, mm -hmm. proposal ad Thank you. to go out for mowing. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, select board's input. Are we doing this annually? Are we going to try and do a two, a three year? Um, Could you say the town of Woodbury is seeking rather than are seeking? Is, is this, this going to have to go in the paper? Yeah, that's the purpose of that. The whole thing. Mm. Mm. Would it be done in the past, Brandy, for a time frame on that? Have we usually done it yearly? No. Okay. We, we, the last one was a three-year contract. Mm, Has right. it worked out pretty well doing it that way? Well, now we're separating from the cemetery, so... This is the first time we've done this just, just on our own. Right. Yep. So, any things you have, change them, bounce me an email, and then... Um, going forward so we can have the dates that I put in match for getting them back, having you open them, mm -hmm. and then having somebody lined up for um, Memorial Weekend to make sure mm -hmm. they're all pretty. Mm -hmm. Do you remember when the cemetery bids are due? I do not know okay. what the cemetery bids are due. But if we don't get any here, do us, what? That doesn't have to do with us. I realize that, but if we don't get anybody for this, we might be able to get them to tag on. We've already, I've already handed out, um, we've already had people inquiring. Oh, good. Oh, great. So great. Thank you. Okay, good. Licensed, users comp, all that good stuff. Hmm. I had also given you VLCT um, incident report. If any one of our vehicles is in the incident, whether it's off the side of the road, hitting a barn, knocking over mailbox, um, any damage, one of those needs to be filled out and filed at the town office. Um, specs are on the back, even explaining where was the vehicle on the road, um, all sorts of goodies. So this is in case of an accident. It says driver's report of accident. Or incident. Well, if a truck's over in the ditch, I think it's an incident. It's an accident. Or if there was an intentional. <laughs> So it could be filled out almost immediately. Okay. Let's uh, get back into the practice of it. Sounds like. Ms. Brady, any other comments you'd like to make as part of the town treasurer's report? Mm. Not as of now, other than the mowing, 
Um, I will have to look into um, other other things that need to go out for bids, sand, all that good stuff, fuel again before fall. schedule at this point um, and we had some people join late so we can reopen for public comment for a moment if anybody has anything now that we actually have some folks here okay <laughs> then we will um, head on to the report on the status of office heating system replacement from Diana and Robin. So uh, we had, uh, I made some calls to some providers and one responded, uh, Gillespie Fuels, who happened to be our fuel provider, was happy to come. The others, some, a couple of the other ones that I called seemed to not want to come unless we were their customer already, but hmm. well, whatever, Gillespie's been good to us for all these years. So. They uh, came, Robin and I went down uh, in the basement and he looked all around and we told him what we were looking for to, um, because uh, the insurance company was willing to buy us a new furnace, even though their price was a little low. We also talked with him, he suggested that we consider um, uh, going to propane. Mm. He said even though a gallon of propane has about 30% less BTUs than a gallon of oil, it's more efficient and the price generally works out. I mean they have to go up and down so <laughs> I don't know how you can expect uh, a good estimate on that. But the one thing about is if we go to oil, I guess our chimney doesn't have a liner. So if we go to gas, we don't have to worry about that. But if we stay with oil in order to be up uh, to code, we might have to line that big old. Yes, because you have to do a level three inspection to change the appliance. Yikes. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Yes, you will. <laughs> so if we so if we did go to uh, to gas, that would be the the first estimate here, which material and labor, including some changes to the ductwork and the uh, insurance adjuster did include some ductwork work. So I guess we could call call that uh, all part of the deal. Seven thousand five forty one. Uh, but the Lespies also stated there was nothing wrong with their furnace. Right. Yeah, so if you want to, so, if, so it seems to me, and I've said this before, I think if they want to pay for us to replace our 20 year old furnace, I think that's a deal we should not uh, give up. He did tell us that the expected useful life was about 25 years. Okay. That's, yeah. They're only giving us like two grand though for the furnace, right? Yeah, it's yeah. Not, well, that's it's the other thing. That I wanted to talk about this also. I don't understand what's going on with all this, with all this back and forth with the insurance company. But they did say that if you don't, you know, if one of the prices doesn't come out right, you can ask, you can ask for more. It's gonna take us forever. It says any request for supplemental funds must be made prior to the work being done. Uh, if the contractor you choose thinks he or she is unable to complete the speci specified repairs for the amount allowed in our estimate, please have your contractor contact me immediately. Any request must be made prior to the work being done. So the, there is an opening there for more, for more than the uh, The 
$3,438 that they offered. Of course, the set, their, their price also includes depreciation. Mm -hmm. If we paid the $7,541, um, if they took that as our cost, they would take off depreciation also of that. Should we show them this quote and see well, that's what that's what That's what I was thinking, I would, but I didn't want to step on any toes. Brandy's been dealing with these people, but well, I know. I send the emails to the board so that mm -hmm. I'm not the one. Oh, okay. So I can contact but, her and... Well, yeah, but uh, sooner than later, because this has been dragging on since July. Right, July. right. So, yeah, I know. And we I waited mean, so we long to get... At, I mean, stuff that's important to me is our bulkhead is crap. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's damage from the water running down the stairs. That immediately, in my eyes, should be fixed or included into that. You mean the door? Yes, the, the bottom, door. Yeah. yeah. There's no insulation on the other side of the door, so you're losing heat loss right was, here. But was that even no storm damage? Well, yeah, the water was running down the stairs. Yeah, but did it damage the door? I mean, was that included in door? his original no. estimate? No. Is it too late to add that in? No, she's going back. No, it's not. Okay. But I think you want an estimate for that. Whether it, and it's homemade jobby, the one that's down there, it's wood, it's oversized. I don't, well, if you could take really a look at it. It's going to be really expensive then, right? Well, mm -hmm. wood wise, it's going to have yeah. to be Crete, yeah. I don't. Okay. Yeah. I think as, you'd have as to far do as the carpentry, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. You would have better insight than me mm -hmm. replacing that and doing it correctly. I mm -hmm. will come take a look and give you a number and then mm -hmm. I guess we can yeah, I just send that it off to her. And, yep. Okay. Cool. But, that did, would be nice to have that locked. Did either of the two people that I... One. One in the chemo? The female, yeah. Okay, cool. Very nice. Introduced herself. I think I have to remind the other person. He was ice fishing when I got a hold of him, so he might have been <laughs> distracted. Tis the season. Mm -hmm. But yeah. So I'd like you guys to think about whether or not we should... Well, the other thing is, FEMA's going to pay at least some of the difference after the insurance pays what they're going to pay. So we might, up, might end up only getting 87% of the total but still. That seems like uh, a savings in the long run. Uh, they also said that they could do the, the uh, pressure tank and a little bit of plumbing in there for the price that the insurance adjuster had given about $1,500. So that's why that's on here is the third item. Mm -hmm. So then we just have to decide if we want to go to gas, it's going to be $1,557 more. Did but what did he say about the liner? Like $1,500? 15, $1,500 to $1,800. Yeah. So that covers it. Yeah. So it's yeah. a wash already and if the fuel and is cheaper. And your propane is so much cheaper than yeah. oil. Seems like that would make sense. Mm -hmm. And they could put two, uh, they could put a couple of tanks out and back, like on the far side of the bulkhead, so that we wouldn't have to be going into the neighbor's driveway all the time. To fill up. And they could fill it up right from the parking lot. If you're updating your furnace, I would think you could get some monies from efficiency to law. Oh, they'll probably want it to get a piece or something. Yeah. Well, no, I mean, they, they like to see anybody. <laughs> yeah, possibly. Update and improve. Mm -hmm. We did have an energy audit by them, uh, was it two years ago? Two years now? ago, yeah. Uh, they might help with the windows, too, I wonder. And they talked about doing some spray foam on the walls in the basement and also the door. They said, uh, let's see, we can support the foundation spray foam and bulkhead door insulation slash air sealing as well as the attic air sealing and adding more insulation. I don't think we're interested in doing that at this point, but he did say that can happen all at once or in phases. The incentive would be 75% of project cost up to $5,000. Yeah, they didn't really mention the, the uh, heating system. Well, that wasn't it. That really wasn't an issue yet. Right. Well, it was still an old heating system. 
It wasn't something we were considering. Right, right. And the uh, energy auditor didn't make a note of it. All right. Mm -hmm. So I guess where we'll go from here is I will contact the uh, the uh, insurance company with that with this. With our new Actual quotes. Price yep. And some real, see some what they can do about that. Okay. Thank you. And at some point we'll decide about switching to gas. Yeah, let's see what they'll give us on the quote first. Yeah. Because it's going to take us a long time to get any FEMA money if that's the direction we're going in. Well, well, I mean, yeah, we're waiting for three hundred thousand dollars already. So what's right. a couple hundred? That what's a couple thousand more? <laughs> Um, money that we have to pay. Well, yeah. To get the work done before they pay us. Right. Mm -hmm. so, uh, adds up. Okay. Ms. Durkee, did you want to add anything to that? To no. those comments? Okay. Other than that, we shouldn't totally rule out heat pumps. Okay. Heat pumps would be a nice air conditioning in the sun. Yes. Well, you don't need coffee or jamming. Yep. It's very expensive air conditioning. Expensive air conditioning. Would make it a more functional space, though. But yeah, but the buildings will be used in the morning. Make it a more functional space, though. Let's <coughs> be positive. Uh, okay, um, Paul, would you? Fast, I don't have a lot. Not a lot has changed. I'm trying to get the rest of that town hall stuff cleaned out and get more more in the bathroom. So maybe hopefully in another week or so. Okay. Turn that, because then, and then you've got space over at the town hall to move there. Yeah, is, that, is Tim aware of it? Is like that if I got some guys on a Saturday, does he have access to it so we could just move that stuff into it? Yeah. Do you, or do you want to be I involved have. in that? Oh, well, I'd kind of like to see what it is. It's just not very, we can go look at it at some point. It's just in the front yeah. corner there. It's just some recovery. I mean, there's two options. There's that little shed next to the okay. south shed and the Connex box. Okay, that's the only thing left in there is just getting that stuff out and then we'll mop it and clean it up and yeah. it's ready to go again. Mm -hmm. um, as far as the yeah. FEMA. Tim would have access to, to you. Okay, I'll talk. I'll call you if I think we're going to have time this week. I'd like to get that done. We haven't just gotten it done yet. Mm -hmm. uh, FEMA, the Terry Hall, we got a new FEMA guy, another new FEMA guy. Right. Um, so I finally got all the paperwork from him. So I think we're rounding the corner with the response and the cleanup stuff that we are owed money for. Well, we'll get it about the same time. I don't know when we'll get the money, but um, the paperwork's in. I've, I've got a little bit of work left to do with him. Uh, the station itself, we're in the de uh, determining that it's more, 50, more than 50% damaged phase of the process right now so there this Terry is supposed to get together with the architect that wrote the letter and make FEMA happy with what mm -hmm. the letter says because mm -hmm. it, it, it were more than 50 percent of the building's value damaged but the letter apparently doesn't meet FEMA speak so mm -hmm. and then then we would uh, well I don't know what exactly happens but it means they would rebuild that building to new standards flood resilient really um, we would establish that. That's the next step. We, I don't know what that looks like or what. I, I just don't know. So and opposed to tearing it down. Yeah. It's yeah. A, so it's a process, right? It's a process. So then we we would establish that cost, and FEMA would pay their 90 or whatever they're going to pay, and we would either do it or the other alternative is apply for a. Wow. Well, that's two steps. It's like oh. you, you could apply for an alternative project where mm -hmm. we could put one more bay on the new building mm -hmm. and get that whole thing out of where it floods, mm -hmm. but that's two steps down the road. So we're just trying to bite mm -hmm. off a little piece of the elephant because it just seems like you do one thing and then there's the next thing you got to do. So I, I, we're just at the, at the step where we'll decide the building is or isn't more than 50% damaged right at this point. So that's that part of it. Um, we did finally get some insurance money. We did, yeah, we did finally get the insurance check, but they hosed us pretty bad. So we right. you know, worked thirty to forty thousand dollars less than what we have for damage at the moment. Mm. 
So again, all this is going to play into what FEMA ultimately pays because, mm -hmm. like in the conversation you were just in, if the building's determined that it's just, it's too damaged, then they may make us go back to the insurance company to max out the policy, which mm -hmm. is I think three hundred fifty thousand dollars for the building. Because if you're in the same boat with the town clerk's office, they will have to pay what the actual costs are minus depreciation up to the limits of the policy. So always make sure mm -hmm. you keep. If you've got actual costs, just make sure you verify the mm -hmm. actual cost. If we end up fixing that building, again, they would have to step in if we spend more than what they've paid minus depreciation up to the limits of the policy. If that makes any sense for everybody. Yes, it does. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's that's where we're at. So, But all that has to wait until they do FEMA things. And I talked to Wolf uh. and Hardwick. They're in the same boat with their firehouses. They're all sort of in the FEMA waiting category because they're all in the same boat with badly damaged buildings. So. Was Skip able to help you with the uh, paperwork? And make sure so that I that never got to connect with Skip, but I did connect with this Terry guy finally. We met, he took all my paperwork and he's fantastic. As I said, he just turned it all back to me. Mm. I've got four or five things I've got to get him, but it looks like they're trying to get our cleanup and the emergency response done. The building we got to kind of drag our feet on until all that other stuff mm -hmm. kind of works its way through. But we're ahead of most other towns because Hardwick hasn't seen the insurance money and Wolcott hasn't mm -hmm. seen the insurance money, so we're ahead on that curve. Mm -hmm. Nice job, Ben. Yeah, we're, but it's been a little, I don't know. <laughs> I think a little short. <laughs> it's been a frustrating, well, last, you see I'm calmer than the last mm -hmm. meeting and I had a lot longer. So it's a frustrating process. Yeah. Well. <laughs> been a frustrating process. Yeah. Naturally, all I had with FEMA and all that other stuff update, unless you have okay. other questions for something. Yeah. You guys doing otherwise? Everything otherwise? Good? Well, I mean, we can talk about real quick if you got just a minute. Is the uh, the level of violence and mental health problems and drug problem we're dealing with seems to keep increasing. You know, we've had three three fatalities in the last three weeks. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. One person froze to death. We've had a stabbing, and someone got beat up and then stole a car. Here so. in Woodbury County. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, this really? Is, part of any of those. Someone froze oh. to death at the Greenwood Lake Dry Hydrant. We found him. He was almost dead when I found him, and he died oh. in the ambulance. We were trying to work on him. So. Oh, dear. Local resident. Local people? Oh. Oh. Resident. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, that's the stuff that's going on. So our, our demand for service keeps going up, and the, the difficulty of the calls we're dealing with keeps mm. going up. We're, we're having the issue with the drug and gang violence. They're coming up and just shooting people, which we mm. had already. Um, and that's kind of what we're seeing mm. and then that's kind of escalated to people getting beat up on the side of the road and we had one fellow we found beat up in the ditch. He didn't remember how he got beat up in the ditch and he had broken bones and this is what we're dealing with. I, okay. I've never seen anything like it so I don't know what to tell you on that. Just making you aware that that's mm. what's going on. Um, mm. so we're having to be kind of careful about <laughs> You know, we had and nothing's getting reported on the news or anything. You yeah, you're I, not hearing anything. Do you have police backup for some of no, this? Stuff? No, we have no. Really? Police I've had to deal with two times. One, the the uh, shooting victim we had drove into Deb Rose's driveway at midnight or something, and I ended up having to go there because poor Deb's in the driveway with two gang members, mm -hmm. really not very nice people, and I had to deal with that situation. Mm -hmm. One was shot, and the other ones aren't talking. But these are dangerous people. And, uh, but no police, and we put them in the ambulance and off we go. And then I had to go to another person's house where the uh, individuals, there was two individuals from somewhere else that were banging on their door and the person was inside freaking out on the phone with 911. I responded mm -hmm. up to the building with the rescue truck lights and siren mm -hmm. pretending we had a medical call. Mm -hmm. They got in my face, mm -hmm. asked me why I was there. And I said, are you having a medical emergency? Because if you're not, then I need to deal with the one that is here. Mm -hmm. and, they, and they said, can you please, I said, can you please move out of my way? They were right in my face and they mm -hmm. just said, screw this. And it wasn't very nice and they got in the car and drove away. But that's how we were diffused mm -hmm. it because the police, I went into the individual's house, they're like, well, we're not coming. The police like, we're not coming. So don't, you better arm yourself is oh all I can tell God. you. The poor lady was terrified and I was at that stage. All I could think of to do was, I'll just go pretend there's a medical call and that kind of shoot them off. But that's yeah. kind of the stuff that's going on. That's quick thinking. Thank you for that. Yeah, it's all we could do. I mean, I didn't know what else to do. I pulled in lights and, and I brought brought someone that didn't look very threatening, you know. So this, I just told them, hey, we must. I was told there was an EMS call here. Are you having an EMS emergency? No. Mm. Then get out of my way, please. <laughs> that's what mm. I, I don't know what else to do. It's just kind of the circumstances we're in. You can't. I know this is where we're always in a tough position because 
you know, we're finding people that are in car accidents. I had one lady with a hundred bags of heroin in her pocket, uncapped needles. Mm. Um, you know, we got to be careful with open bag, open foil packs. So we're really encouraging people not to stick their fingers into people's pockets or when you're doing EMS care, just oh, be so geez. careful because if you stick it, in, you'll have a jab. So you find something like that, and the police won't come. Yeah. Absolutely not. So you send these people away? With well, even when they arrest people, yeah. they just get a summons. Well, I, I know, but you know. <laughs> it's it's a kid. <laughs> I just got caught left. He arrested, he went to, to arrest the people from the car accident. And he got was back in like 15 minutes. I said, where, where is the person? You got them all cuffed up? No, they got their summons. Mm. One individual, we had three days in a row involved in three motor vehicle crashes. Yeah. And got arrested each day. Mm. Good Lord. So. <laughs> <sighs> Wow. They were driver, then they were the passenger, then they were the passenger. Oh, yeah. Wow. The park, our parking lot. So your parking lot's loaded with, I've done a couple, three overdoses there. You've been there for a few. It's starting yeah. back up, you know, and it's not local people that are in the passenger seats. It's, yeah. it's, um, yeah. The, the water tub in the Gulf is yeah. a lot of stuff. What I would do with things at the time, you guys don't need to do it, but like, it's, I, I was walk up to the cars, bang on the window. I just, someone right over here by the uh, old dam, or right over here, Someone called, thought someone was overdosing. I pulled up, got out, and they're in there shooting up. And I said, get get out of here. Just pack your crap, and they just drove away. So that's what I would do. Mm -hmm. they, just tell them to leave. But you ladies don't do that. No. <laughs> oh, no. They're, I sat there and waited. Yeah. It was a drug deal. Um, and then I ended up taking off, going back through, taking a picture of the car. And I knew who was in the driver's seat. But... Yeah, and we're at our max for police patrol, so yeah. that so five thousand needs to get up. But well, we had we had a what about our constable. We don't um, we don't have one. He had no training. A constable has to have police training. Police so training. Deal with this stuff. No, okay, we and a lot of the stuff he has to have a police officer with him. Yeah. So he can do his. So we're we're just walking a fine line, you know, because mm. what's happened? Like we had a one day. Two overdose. There's three overdoses. I did the one in the morning. We found a dead person in the afternoon, and while we were dealing with that one, is when the other person came in. So it was like bang, 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 just like that. And then the next day, we found the guy frozen dead. So that's just the way it goes. So there's bad batches of drugs that come through town, and that's what we're dealing with. So, and so we're watching out for everybody's mental health too, because that gets tough to deal with. So we're getting to deal with that too. So there's a lot going on. So I'm just making you aware. Be careful. No, we appreciate it. Yeah. That's thanks kind for of, dealing with uh, it. Yeah, thank you for doing it. <laughs> and uh, that's kind of what I wanted you to bring up. Mm -hmm. So thank you. Without yeah, being yeah. prompted, mm -hmm. you did yeah, exactly yeah, what I was hoping you would do. It's been getting a lot more intense lately. Yeah. And some of it's really sad because we had one fellow die that I think just started doing heroin two mm -hmm. months ago mm -hmm. and ended up overdosing. And, uh, you know, that's the stuff that just some of you know. It's, yeah, it's all tragic. Yeah, it's just bad, bad business. Mm -hmm. It's all tragic. And it's just the continuous nature of it. It's like here's the same car load of people, mm -hmm. you know, the same group of people beating each other up, the same group just over and over and over again. So that's what we're dealing with. <sighs> Yay. <laughs> no <Well>, fire, so? <laughs> Uh, no. Well, we've been to other people's fires. It's been, I don't like to jinx ourselves. It's, it's not our turn. <laughs> The, uh, yeah. We had a flooded apartment house in Calais yesterday. Someone let the water pipe split. No. Ran from the third floor for two and a half days. So they, oh. you know, that was a fun phone call to make. Mm. And I found out that the Red Cross won't help individual from an apartment. So the poor lady with the kid had no housing. Oh, so wow. I was like, they're like, we don't have to, it has to be. I'm like, okay, well, mm. okay. that's what you got. Mm. So that's it. That's what I got for report so far. Unless you get any more questions, all no. Nope. Thank you, Paul. All we appreciate that. I'll get out of here and what you want. Thank you. All right, Paul. Well, thank you for all your work. We really yeah, do so appreciate the, it. The pre-town meeting is Thursday night. Thursday night. Six, six thirty. Six. Six, six o'clock. In the gym. In the gym. See you all there. But there's six thirty at the gym. Pre uh, pre pre town oh, meeting. Oh, pre pre. Oh, okay. Yeah. No shooting and yelling. <laughs> Talking, laughing, <laughs> sharing five stories. Five o'clock. five o'clock. Is it five to five forty-five? Okay. I'll yeah. try to make that one. I should be for yeah. 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 All right. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Thank All right. Thank you, Paul. Have a good Bye. night. Take good care, good please. Night. Thank you. No worries. <laughs> Uh, just to follow up on what Paul said, though, Ms. Brandy also brought it up. I think that it's worth consideration for us to consider upping our amount of of Washington County patrol. Um, that's going to cost us. 
But so they don't even have they, 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 they've, they've maxed out. If you look on your financial statement, they're they, at like four thousand something. Really? They well, that's good out. because that will be enough time to come back for an hour. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it, it needs so uh, to be, I mean, especially sure. based on Paul's Summer comments here, yeah. and the things that I have heard anecdotally, which mm -hmm. I think are mostly confirmed by Paul's comments, um, I think that that's something that we need to consider. But would Washington County deal with this stuff? They don't tend to do that. That's type right. of Enforcement. They don't like to. Uh, they don't, but um, in the absence of VSP, mm -hmm. it's our and we without uh, an agreement with Hardwick, which we do not have. Mm -hmm. um, this is our next best option, I'm afraid. And, and I know we tried out but once before, and the Washington County Sheriff's Department didn't told us that they didn't have the manpower. That's correct. To, to meet that. So they didn't even use the extra. And some years they don't even use the five thousand, but that all depends on whether they have the staff, and we don't so, know that. So anyway, right now, I, I think it's do. this is something that we have to pursue. Yeah. So. Um, Yes, please, uh, Monty Shannon. On something like that, can you dictate the hours that they patrol? We can. We typically have done it as like a lump sum for this is the expected amount of, mm -hmm. of money that we can give you. Please use this total mm -hmm. amount. We've never been very specific about when, when they're here. Um, at least with the Washington County Sheriff's Office, uh, they're typically just patrol. Right. So they're mostly doing traffic stops. Um, we have had a very difficult time interacting with Hardwick Police because they are very understaffed, as well as Hardwick Rescue, and I think that Paul would echo that. Um, my wife is on Hardwick Rescue, and they're always under. But VSP um, is our next sort of avenue, and they um, only come up here for very specific reasons. So your point's very well made. Um, we kind of turned away from VSP just because they simply weren't helping us and sort of went towards Washington County. Um, but you're right, we kind of need to start this over again. It's been a year. We can't get a contract with the state police. We can't get a contract with the state police. No, they are on call. Um, so Washington County seems to be our best bet. Mm -hmm. If Hardwick was willing to work with us, if they weren't so understaffed, mm -hmm. that would obviously yeah. that'd be our best option. Mm -hmm. But uh, you know, they're over to Walkit, and they're they're Pretty kind hard. of all they're kind of all over the place, and uh, they just yeah, we just don't have enough police presence. Um, so having a police car, having a Washington County Sheriff's Office car that even cruises through on somewhat of a regular basis. Or hangs out at the town office sometimes, especially in the evenings. That's right. Yeah. Um, you know, but we could make those specificities if they're willing to work with us. Right. Um, so far, sir, it hasn't been that easy. I'm afraid. But your point's very well made, Stephen. Yeah, Murphy. I wonder. I wonder if you've ever considered or heard about intermunicipal police department. It would similar with the fire department. We serve part of Callis. Mm -hmm. I wonder if, you know, potentially Cabot, Callis, Woodbury, being an adjoining town, could have one or two cruisers. Maybe we could share space with, I don't know, if our emerg new emergency center, or maybe at Hardwick. I wonder if there's a different way to think about this. We're not, it seems like we don't have access to police service. I wonder if we can work with other towns to form one. It sounds like a really good idea. Um, we've never budgeted for it and we don't have the space at the moment. Um, policing is expensive, yeah. which is why we typically have taken advantage of our county, our county sheriff's office. Mm -hmm. um, to have our own municipal service, you know, even when our fire service is volunteer, and it's, it's rather expensive. Mm -hmm. And the taxpayers are not always thrilled about how much we have to pay for our fire and emergency crews. So to add something onto that is a is a is a conversation that we can certainly have. We've never pursued it, but it's a great concept, Stephen. Thank you. Um, something I can try to look into. I'm happy to. Michael, you were on the board when there was a whole big 
went over everything a yeah, few years yeah, ago. Kind of I, I don't know if you turned were. Turned over every stone that we could think of about well, police. We, we tried really hard. Yeah. And okay, it sounds like there. you guys went through the same process and came to the same, same conclusion, unfortunately. Conclusion. Yeah. Um, um, hmm. yeah. It's too bad that Hardwick is, I mean, we were really close to signing Ideal. the line one <laughs> yeah. time and yeah. Yeah. they yeah. lost a number of folks and that was the end of that. And that yeah. fell apart. Yeah. Um, but, uh, I can tell you there's a lot of uh, residents that are very frustrated and and are beside themselves with all the drugs and the, the crap that's going on. They may be more receptive to spending more tax dollars on something like that. I mean, it's a, it's a good point to make. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, it's something for a town meeting conversation. Yeah. It's a perfect, perfect town meeting conversation. It's going to be frustrating, but mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. the time for it. Um, okay, we've belabored the fire department's report in a different direction, and I'm sorry for that to take it off of our uh, intended path there, but um, we're just about on time. Uh, Alfred, would you please give us the uh, road commissioner's report? Thank you, Mr. Larry. Uh, yeah, so it's, we're approaching our second or third mud season. <laughs> it's here. Um, we are now down a man. Uh, Joe's day, last day was last Friday. Um, I've got a couple of potential, uh, one, full -time, one, one person that's interested in full-time and one that's part-time. And the ad has gone now. Yes. Great. The ad has, yeah, that's all the one Great. person. Great, okay. Thank you, Mrs. Mm -hmm. Sorry to interrupt you, Mr. Larry. Uh, so, mm, we have to wait until the 8th, is what the ad says, right. before Thank you for advancing everybody that. time to put their app in. Mm -hmm. uh, so hopefully we get more options, but we have to wait for that. Yeah, we had to give it enough of a window so that we had oh, yeah. an applicant pool, mm -hmm. so I'm sorry for it. We no, tried to shorten it up as much as we could, right. but we needed to give it at least a window so that people could see it in multiple postings. Right. Yeah, no, I totally get this takes time. I've done a yeah, lot of it. Yeah, I know, and I apologize for the yeah. for the delay. Does the one applicant you got seem like a good option for the yes. full time? Yes. Cool. Good. That's good to know. Yeah, he's one that has applied in the past, uh, but we didn't have, we weren't offering what he was looking for at that time. Uh, but we, now we do, so. Great. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so stay tuned on that, I guess. Other than that, um, we've just been fighting the battles uh, with what we've got. Trucks seem to be holding up fairly well. There's been, there's always an issue. Every time we go out, there's some little thing we gotta think around and fix. Um, Uh, we budgeted for a new sand screen, and it's time to do that. Okay. So. I think you guys got this um, by email, and I made some copies, and I don't know what I did with them, but I guess I left them on my desk. I, I, I did see the email. I did, yeah. I did see the email. Yeah. So. I don't think we have a choice. I, I don't either. I think that. You know, we got to do what we got to do. It's something we got to have. Um, and I did, incidentally, I have three quotes. One, the one that you have in front of you, which I don't have a paper copy of, but that's the one I'm going to recommend. Mm -hmm. It's the cheapest. And I was able to somewhat be part of the design factor. Okay. Mm -hmm. With this, with this, uh, contractor. Michael, would you give me that to help you? You have my copy. I got more. <laughs> Somewhere. Mr. Larry, do you think that that's something that you would be able to repair? I mean, sand screens just go down hard. Yes. Is it, does it feel like you, you, like you you have yes. a winter torch that could could make that we last? Been, we've been I know, you've been cobbling hours. together the one yeah. that we have yeah. for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, so do you feel like that's a design since you were had input in it that we could have yes yes beyond it's what we would consider its normal life 
Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because so that I makes a difference to me. going to be a, a lot stronger than the one we have. Yep. Uh, it's also bigger. So it's, it's wider. So right now, the loader has just barely like two inches or three inches mm -hmm. on each side. Mm -hmm. So every time you're going in, yep. you're pushing out. Mm -hmm. The loader is pushing out, you yep. know, so it's putting extra stress on mm -hmm. it because of the size of it. So with this being wider, I think it's gonna it's gonna have less stress and it's gonna be uh, more useful for us. Awesome. Is it gonna be built on our site? No, it'll be built in his site. Um, so part of this guy's quote is uh, five hundred dollars for delivery, but that puts us over our eight thousand uh, dollars because of the delivery cost because of the delivery cost. So I'm recommending or suggesting that we take our town truck with a trailer and go get it. It's in New York. Uh, it's maybe three hour drive, maybe four hour drive, and we get it ourselves. Mm -hmm. So you're paying one man to drive your truck for a day versus $500. Doesn't, doesn't matter. Seems like the $500, well, we, should ex we, we should just go ahead and pay the trucking cost. As opposed to have it taking, delivered, you think? Have it delivered, as opposed that to taking somebody off site. It's not the point. The oh, point, I apologize. The point over, is more that it's over our. Uh, so our purchase and policy states we have to have a contract. Right. With this, we have to go for bid over the $8,000 threshold. Okay. Right. Yeah. 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 So that's where. But if the, we can consider the shipping costs separately from the thing itself. There still should be a contract. Well, we've got a... That's not a contract. No, it's not a contract. When it's VLCT says, when you're paying out for your 1099s, where's your contract that's over this threshold? When they come to the audit, which I'm up for audit right now, anybody who's outside services who does not have a contract with us or in showing proof of insurance... That's a liability. Then we get penalized. But isn't this a purchase as opposed to a contract? The labor, is a, it's physical. I mean, there should be a contract. It's not like we're bought, we're paying somebody to build it. We're buying we thing. Paying right? somebody no, to we're not. We're He's building it. The gentleman that's doing it is welding it. He's but building the board, it. But by the time we right. get there, it's built. <laughs> so we're right. not it's paying somebody to build it. It's built in his them. facility. So any... any risk is on his insurance because it's built That's there and we're just, we're just, that. so so, a, so we can't do it as just a purchase sure you can well I, i'm just you call the lct then no no i know I'm, 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 I'm just asking what kind of we're, a we're, contract we're, we're we're buying we're, we're basically buying a piece of equipment right mm -hmm. If I'm wrong, please. Yes, yeah, no. It's, it's me. his design. It's his. It's his shop that's building it. He's purchasing the material that's going to be built with. Mm -hmm. uh, we are buying a finished product. Okay. No different than buying a truck mm -hmm. from right. the Ford dealer. That has a contract. There's so big. why can't we turn this into a contract? Why? I mean, what's, what's exactly? That's what I'm saying. But so. then it's over the price that. There's over the appropriate price. Because we're talking about... We have a purchasing policy. Right. No, I understand. That's what I'm asking. So that's... We're supposed to be sticking to rules or sticking to... <laughs> and I completely agree. It's uh, That we should be sticking to our... our but we've our had this conversation policy. before and Alpi said, well, if I go out and buy $10,000 worth of, equip of culverts, do I have to comply with the purchasing policy? And I think at the time we said no. And this well, is something that, the emergency. I think that was a different circumstance. No, 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 think, no yeah. it wasn't. No, that Doesn't was just have, a general conversation. Does the, the fact time. that it's budgeted have anything to do with this? No. I mean, you've put you've put ten thousand dollars into a line item for this purchase. That's correct. And you've put me in responsible of that budget. That's correct. I have done my due diligence. I've got three quotes sitting in front of me. Mm-hmm. I don't know what else I can do other than turn this, this we can choose, choose our provider mm -hmm. and have them put it into a contract. Whatever this contract needs to be, I'm sure he'll be happy to write it up. Ms. Brady, 
how do we make this work? As opposed to I mean, having I them go, the of the as opposed to having them. I'm the one that has to answer to VLCT. I know, and, and I, the audit, the, so. so I'm just asking to. So now uh, I can just just tell me instead of doing audits, it can be you guys doing the audits instead well, of me going. Where's the contract? The select board should be giving a contract. Okay, but, but usually a contract is contract for services. I would for suggest services. calling VLCT and <laughs> trying to clear up the question okay. rather than you know us. Ideally, ideally, how would we how would we go about this to make it as straightforward as possible? You would do a contract. Okay, and we you lay out. We are so not responsible for. How do you do a contract? Them. That's the question. Yeah. So, how do you want us to write that contract? Well, typically, the clerk or somebody on the select board will. BLCT has documents on online for okay. sample so, con for contracts okay. that state how it should be worded. Make sure they they have insurance. They have and show proof of insurance of insurance. The liability so the liability is off us. Well, yes, for sure. That's the same as is hiring the excavator to fix our roads. He has to show us proof of insurance. Right. That that puts VLCT off our back because we've proven that our contractor has insurance. Right? Isn't that? It seems like that's what that's what the contract is going to provide. Proof that the town of Woodbury is off the hook for a liability. Right. If there's a contract. But what's the liability? I mean, it's a thing. You know, if we get the thing, if we buy it and it breaks, it's ours. And if it kills somebody, it's our responsibility. But by that time, Holy it's shit. not. We're done. You know, by yeah. that time, it's. I think the easiest thing here is to. I've already asked him to lower his price five dollars below five to, uh, eight thousand. That clears us from that. I take the town truck down and pick the thing up, and we're under the eight thousand dollar mark. Contract goes away. There's no liability other than our vehicle driving over the road, which is covered by insurance, anyways. We have our our tool before our deadline, which is fast approaching. Sure. July one. July one. Mm. Okay. This is not something that just came up. We've been working on this for, for months. For what, months. What are your two other quotes? Uh, I've got one here from a very local guy. Um, Fourteen thousand six seventy four. Good gracious. Mm -hmm. Almost double. And then I've got another one here from Nash Equipment. Uh, they don't make them. They somebody some other fabricator makes them and then sells them to these guys. Ninety eight hundred. Mm -hmm. So both are more than this fellow that I have found, and I was able to be design part it. of the design because mm -hmm. I know what works. I, I mean, I've used these these things for twenty five years. I know what works. The angle's got to be right. You know, I asked them to put the on the grizzly itself. I asked them to put half inch steel there. Still on the sliding. Yep. Mm -hmm. So that when you dump the sand over it kind of cuts it as it runs down onto the, and breaks up the chunks better. Mm -hmm. um, well it sounds like the right design. It's cheaper. I it's mean, I the right design for less money. Do you so get warranties with any of these? <laughs> I didn't go there. I didn't <laughs> ask that. But it's, it's steel. Mm -hmm. So um, I'd be really surprised. I would be really surprised. Just asking. Yeah, yeah. I don't. I don't think it's one of those things that is going to get mm -hmm. a warranty. But we've got a welder and torch, and we got access to steel if mm -hmm. we need it. Um, but this thing is built rugged. It's not going to fail. So I, we go out there and get it. Miles on the vehicle. You're looking between eight hundred and a thousand miles to go out there and get it and bring it back. Uh, I'm not really sure of that. I haven't done that calculation. The biggest thing is he wants half up front, and I want a contract. What I would the contract over, say? Well, if I'm giving you $4,500, I want a contract that I'm actually going to get the ending piece. Okay, yeah. So that's all the that's contract not, needs to say is that I'll give you this? There's more no, specs. No, there's, there's a there's little bit more to it. VLCT, all you have to do is go on and look at the links. You just put in this design, this is what you want, we need the insurance. It's it's not like this is something new. Okay. So um, can we find this contract and, and, and establish it? 
I mean, it seems like that's the hang-up. Why can't we find this contract and, and, and get it in place? Well, that's what she's indicating, that we can go on the VLC. Yeah, so uh, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's on the select right. board to do that, and I'm sorry. I, I will... Um, but when you're handing over that much money to somebody that's in New York, <coughs> there is, should be a contract. Right, but this is not just a fly-by-night company. I'm sorry. I'm not it's, saying that. You know. I'm just saying to, for coverage, if I'm handing, um, writing a check out for how, I'll call VLC too. there should be a contract. And I will just go ahead and look at the website. Okay. On the contract. Can I steal that back? Mm -hmm. I'll send you something tomorrow. Great. If the board is willing to go ahead with this offer, which seems like it is designed correctly based on the road commissioner mm -hmm. and is the, is the best price. Would want to support that? I support yes. it. It makes sense to me. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Then I will find a way to write the contract up. Shouldn't take too long, right, Miss Brandy? Because I can just find everything and put in the information, talk to these people, and get it all squared away. The standards are in there. Yep. Yeah. Sounds great. I will do it, and then I'll get you something, and then we can follow through. Does that sound fair enough? Yes. All right. Let's do that. Anything else that you wanted to bring up, Mr. Larry, as part of the town road commissioner's report? Uh, unless there are questions, I'll do my best with questions, but uh, we're going to be going through some tough times here with the roads in the next month. And you're short. And I'm short handed. Mm -hmm. yep. um, Did you end up getting your, your gravel pile replenished? I got some, yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, last fall I hustled out some, I got a little bit of a stash. I'm assuming that there will be pits opening up soon because all the towns are going to be in the same, Very same place. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Same position. Yeah. Everybody's had a funny mud season. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's been a little bit tricky to be able to haul because you gotta you got to have chains on the trucks. So you take the chains off, you put them back on, you, put, you know, so it's a lot. And if it's only one day of hauling, it's really not worth taking everything down. The three hours it takes to... to you know, take the chains off the trucks. So once we get a longer stretch of decent leather, we'll be we'll be doing that, taking the chains off and the okay. material, either to the shop or to the roads. I have a follow up. Um, so I just noticed on the um, going over the timesheets, we're still using the old ones, but I think we're good to go, right, with the new timesheets. Could we get a bunch printed out and uh, that get them on to you guys? Brandy or somebody at the office printed them, so I received them today. Oh, perfect. So next week you will be seeing them. Okay, cool. Thank you. Okay. I got a question. Um, Go ahead, sir. Just wondering if the select board, is in, in regards to last Monday, if they put anything into place for the town crew to get out with in a more timely manner during storms? We had a conversation about it. Um, I know, I appreciate you guys getting back to me. I just was wondering if anything had been done? Mm -hmm. If you're going to do anything? Um, are you referring, referring to a specific well, event? or Last Monday, to be exact, but there's been others where it doesn't mm -hmm. seem like the town crew, not particularly on the but the town crew aren't getting out in a very timely manner. Um, Monday we had five inches of snow, and you could go in any direction, and every other town was out plowing and sanding, and it was gone by 10 o'clock, and our crew didn't get in until 10 o'clock. Um, we haven't addressed any specific event specifically. Well, we did. You weren't was, with us, yeah. but Alfie, was, Diana, and I talked about it. It was a holiday, and it was a surprise storm. They weren't talking any sort of weather in the, in the forecast mm -hmm. and it all of a sudden dropped at three o'clock in the morning it dropped uh, four or five inches of snow and so thinking that it was a holiday the buses weren't running right so yeah. I didn't I didn't put a lot of energy into it and I agree I should we should have been out there regardless uh, of the buses but you did but not know did that not. it was a school but even though it was a holiday it was easy to assume that school would be closed, but it wasn't, and you That's didn't right. know that. That's right. 
Don't you have a school calendar over to the garage? I do now, but I did not. I've had <laughs> zero com communication with the school as far as the calendar, the bus garages, where I don't even know where the buses run other than seeing them out there. Um, I did contact the the principal, and she has sent me now sent me the calendar, so I have that now. But prior, I haven't. I don't know. Does it come to the office and it's just not coming to me, or I don't know. But that's kind of a, a new point, really. I mean, you you've been in this business long enough, so you know you don't get holidays and you don't get weekends. From October to April, you guys with the snow, you gotta be out there. I mean, but what what if we had? An incident where the rescue squad had to go somewhere and go get there. Rescue squads got chains and they got tires. That's, that's, that's not the point. It's not the point, Monty, but we're doing the best we can. You want to come drive a truck? Come on over. Don't miss me. Okay. okay. Um, we will address it. It needs to be addressed. Okay. Fair enough. My other question is, in, in lieu of what um, the conversation about all the drugs and all the is there a reason why the town garage gate isn't closed at the end of the day and on weekends? With all the, the thievery, stealing going on in this town, it's terrible. Mm. Mm. We have cameras that are, that are watching the whole yard. I can sit in my office and see the whole yard. It is track to track. Uh, and it's a rather inconvenience to move the gate twice a day. One time we're coming in at two or three in the morning. It's it's dark. It's you know we want to get in the truck and go do our job. The gate is not going to stop these drug people from coming in and out of that yard. There's cameras right now. Well, that's right. So yeah. does is there is there a gate down at the town office? They could break into the town office just as well as they can do anything. There's also a church there. That's kind of a different scenario. Oh, is it? Okay. Anyway, uh, I would like to see that gate shut. Oh. There. I mean, it makes sense. We will, yeah, we, it's, a, it's a it's a it's a point it's a point that we can discuss. Mm -hmm. But um, if there's if, well, I have a gate here, then we need a better gate that's not so hard to open and shut. There's nothing wrong with the gate. Oh. The gate works. It's just okay. you got to get out of your truck at the road. Yeah. Open the gate. Get back in your truck. Yeah. It's just it's an inconvenience. Yeah. If it's that big a deal, we'll do it. But yeah. just taking time from the from our job. Okay. And for a very little benefit, it's just not going to benefit much. All right. Like I said, they're going to walk around the gate and they're going to go do their their thieving, whatever they're going to do. If there is, everything's locked up. There's nothing really that they can they can get to. I mean, I guess they could slash the greater tires or something crazy. Who knows what they're going to do? But that's not going to be stopped by any gate. Fair enough. Thank you for answering the public comment. Hey, thanks. Appreciate that. <clears throat> Alfred, thank you for responding. Sure. I greatly appreciate it. Uh, and thank you for all the work. Yeah. We do appreciate it. You guys are in good shape as far as I know. Yeah, <laughs> I, I think they are. I mean, yeah, so, so thank you. Especially on a short crew. So. Um, any other comments you would like to make? Otherwise, we'll switch over. No, I'm good. All right. Thanks, sir. So um, we're pushing a little, but uh, the local hazard mitigation plan, the LHMP, uh, we have to appoint committee to prepare the plan, update, review grant agreement paperwork, and determine who should be signing it. So I can start with this, and, and John is here also. Um, John, thank you for being here. So. Um, we met, and by we, John, myself, Jim Schleithelm, and Norman Etkin met uh, last week um, just to get things started with this. Um, but those are the four people um, who um, so far should be appointed to the committee. Um, okay. And we talked about it would be really nice to have somebody from the fire department to be a part of this as they basically are... are emergency, um, rescue, et cetera, um, people. Um, um, so we're, you know, and, and there's, you know, I think we have the four to get things started. We really can't do anything until this agreement paperwork has been signed and um, by a member of the select board. 
and then has to be sent back and, and signed by them. And, and that's when they start ticking the calendar. Because a big part of um, the town's uh, match for the grant is going to be in kind. So anything mm -hmm. like we could have clocked up the meeting that we mm -hmm. did last week. I could have clocked up the time I spent with Brandy to get the DPS survey and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but um, we can't do that until the paperwork has been signed. That's when they start the clock. Okay. So are we are we at a final draft of the paperwork? Oh yeah, they sent us the paperwork. Um, okay. I have a copy here. Diana, you did you were you going to bring one? Mm, you were, you know, no, I don't think I printed it out yet. Okay, okay, because I, 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 I have so not. you don't think you could we could just have you be the signer? Well, or one um, of you, whoever or John, I mean, we talked about that at our meeting, and I'm not really certain who. I think it would be best for this. I am the contact person. You know, I've been okay. the one, and I'm listed there. Mm -hmm. um, but we could have. I mean, it would be if the select board could authorize who that would be. You know, and John is our interesting answer director. The most sense that he be that person. Um, so this is just for the. Um, so that would be up to the select board. Um, mm -hmm. But we're we'll be getting um, nine thousand eight hundred and sixty-two dollars, I think, and then the town match is three thousand or something or other. Can't remember the numbers exactly. Um, you know, the bulk of, I'm hoping that the bulk of what um, the town match will be, um, will be uh, in kind. So we're going to need to track any bit of work, kind of like FEMA. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is a FEMA thing, sort of. Without this, we could get FEMA funding for mm -hmm. emergencies. So we're going to want to be tracking our time. Um, we haven't budgeted town. any match. No, that's why. Me. That's why <laughs> I would like to have it be in kind. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you're welcome, volunteers yeah. who don't get paid, but can charge an hourly worth, rate yeah. for their time. Um, so, and I, I, I'm not certain that we'll use all of that money. Um, I don't think we'll need to use that much. Um, we will have to. We have an RFP that we went over that we will. Um, again, we can't really send it out until the agreement is signed. Oh. Um, so, um, so you think you'll hire somebody to work with you? Your yes, team need, can't need, do it. Yeah. We need. Um, I mean, Norman has quite a bit of expertise. I have none. Mm -hmm. um, I'll let John speak for. You know. <laughs> that means the warm body. Yeah. <laughs> and Jim Schweidham is interested. He's also a warm body. I mean, I'm basically a warm body mm -hmm. too. But. Um, uh, but we do need someone who is aware of what the you know FEMA statutes are. I mean, the, mm -hmm. this thing has to be approved by FEMA. So, um, in the the past two rounds, um, it has always been uh, the Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission that has mm -hmm. been our consultant. But there mm -hmm. are other consultants available. You know, we'll have to put this mm -hmm. out um, by the town's um, uh, procurement policy. So it will go out to. To bid um, mm. as it did last time. Mm. So I didn't print out. I printed out everything that was kind of specific for this agreement, and then there's you know another ten pages of uh, the usual government um, mm. kind of stuff, yeah. um, mm. which is in the maturity contract. So is this the one that has to be signed? Mm -hmm. So, this is Chris's last meeting. But <laughs> yeah, I'm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. So, if we. Uh, the select board can authorize somebody to sign it or they can sign it themselves. Um, mm -hmm. And then we could go from there. Well, I think it makes sense to have somebody sign it who knows a little bit more about what's going on. I mm -hmm. mean, I'm not even a warm body. I'm more like a cool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, if we could authorize you to be the signer, that would make more sense because there's probably going to be other stuff along the way that needs to be signed. Well, yeah, there'll you know, be lots of other stuff. Yeah. yeah. 
Um, yeah, I'm, I'm fine with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, well, that. I guess I'd make a motion then that we let M Michael be the signer for the town for the purposes of this Vermont Department of Public Safety Grant Agreement Award. I'll second your motion. All in favor? Aye. Chris didn't leave, did he? He asked me to chair. So I guess that, I don't know, maybe he just meant Sometimes he goes out and makes a phone call or something. Okay, well he may, I don't know, he didn't say. He took his stuff? Um, yep. Oh. Here I am. Mm -hmm. um, do we also need to approve, appoint a committee? Do we yes. need to do that right yes. now? Yes. Okay. Chris is back. Oh, okay. okay. And then maybe, and probably will be other um, people that will be asking. Okay. Okay. Just look forward to appointing a committee. Okay. Well, I guess I make a motion that we appoint Michael Gray, Jim Schweighelm, John Gordon, and Norman Atkin to be the uh, LHMP uh, team. Mm -hmm. I'll second that motion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Cool. But when you were but we gone, have to we have to actually review the paperwork. We well we did. We, oh we did. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, we had it for a <laughs> so anyways, we decided that it would make sense for Michael to be the signer because he's gonna be, you know, the one who knows what's going on. And since this is your last meeting, we could have you sign it, but that's kind of not really helpful. Meaningless. Yeah. Well, thank you for that. You're welcome. Sure, Frank. <laughs> should be a friend. It's not meaningless. Let's be honest. Well, it's a signature. So I don't know if you heard this part, but Michael explained that most of the town match will be provided by their in kind. By in kind. Yeah. yeah. That's the intention. We don't have anything budgeted yeah. for that. We had looked at this in the past. Yeah. We had, we had looked at this in the past. Well, it's but this is a, this is but, that's the actual but this is the actual form. form. Yeah. 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 That's the actual agreement. Okay. Um. So what I will do is send a copy of this meeting's minutes with this, so mm -hmm. that they understand that I've been authorized yeah. to be the to be the signer. Signer. Yeah. Okay. Makes the most sense. All right. All right. John, oh, John's got his hand up. Oh, I'm sorry, John. Please. It's somewhat related. I've been going back and forth with uh, Brian McWalters for the state regarding a uh, flood resilient communities fund. Mm -hmm. um, Jake Shattuck is interested in pursuing an application for a buyout for his property, so we're trying to get the, the bits and bobs lined up, and I'll be bringing that stuff to the. To the board once we have about a little bit further along. Yeah. So okay. basically, we'd be completing an application for the funds, and then the town would potentially, if the town is interested, would potentially purchase the property using the funds from the grant to do the buyout. Yeah. So that's just kind of going on. But once I give it a little bit more pieces together, I'll. So they have to one. have this town agree to take the property ownership. Yes. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, right. Take and maintain and green space and all that sort of good stuff. Mm -hmm. And so right. we'll basically we'll work together and put the application in and if they provide if they agree with it with the application they provide the money for the for the buyout. For the buyout. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that money would include tear, tearing it down and Yes. Yeah. And on a similar note, um, it's a similar uh, agency that John was just talking about um, as one of the planning commission's um, sort of projects that we discussed with uh, UI Chile of the Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission is having um, um, someone take a look at the stream as it comes down to Ron Rathburns dun, 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 down through and under Route 14. There, um, I've been in contact with uh, Stephanie Smith from the Vermont Emergency Management, um, and there is a fund, um, it's, it's called the Flood uh, Community Flood Resiliency Fund, um, which is getting another pretty heavy dose of um, funding. Of federal money. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I heard that in the meeting this two years ago. This coming summer um, to um, 
I talked to her and the planning commission has talked about having someone take a look at the stream bed um, and to see if there is some kind of uh, flooding mitigation that could be done to the stream to help keep the village from flooding. Um, and Stephanie suggested that I get a hold of Jaron Borg, uh, one of our district's uh, mm -hmm. stream guy, have him take a look at it and um, either come up with a, a suggestion or a design um, that um, the town could um, apply to this fund for uh, some stream uh, mitigation work. I wondered also whether it sounded like when they talk about mitigation, Skip's not here, but those two bridges, if they could be mitigated above what FEMA is willing to approve. Um, bridges. The, the two bridges that we have to replace. Oh, oh Cabot Road. Yeah, I, I don't know anything yeah. about that. So um, I think it's possible to just replace them as they were. That would be the FEMA project, but FEMA would also like it. Maybe if we could get money to make it better make them better so that mm -hmm. less likely that they would get blown out the next time that also anyway, is that I mean yeah. it's that sounds wonderful yeah. um, and Somebody while we're while we're <laughs> printing money um, yeah, right. <laughs> um, you know we do live in a high-level floodplain mm -hmm. in the center of town mm -hmm. and we're having warmer longer wetter seasons mm -hmm. um, I'm afraid that some of these issues with mitigation are longer term problems than. Yeah, this, that, is, this is not something this, that this will is, happen this summer. It's not going to happen this summer. <laughs> so, if we're thinking about this as a long term, I think that's awesome. Mm -hmm. But um, let's be honest about the fact that if we're going to do flood mitigation of hazards in the village, mm -hmm. we're talking about a decade, mm -hmm. a decade project, mm -hmm. yeah. not a. Yeah not a year project um, there's a lot to this mm -hmm. we the center of town is built on three different stream systems mm -hmm. so the junction in town yeah the reason yeah. I wanted to share this with the select board is just to get a sense of whether um, we should the Planning Commission um, should kind of pursue at least finding having Jaron come get an idea of this, if this is something that's a possibility um, and then what we might be able to do for funding for it um, or um, you know if you don't want us to pursue it or if the town isn't interested then you know we won't do that. Um, well I'm, I'm outgoing on the select board but I'll speak up and say that I think it would be great to get that perspective. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I would support you guys um, doing that. Right. Yeah. Getting a perspective would be really great. Okay. So once uh, Jake's buyout happens, well, doesn't commit us to it. That I mean, that section of yeah. stream is really what's really really left, yeah. left, yeah. left to be yeah. well, prepared. Well, you know, the I know thing. that um, Ronnie Rothburn um, would you love know, his would, the would love behind his garage <laughs> and his house. That bank really took a beating. Um, so I would ask. I'm going to be asking Jared to look. There, it doesn't seem to me that there's anything that we can do until it actually comes right into the village. I mean, it's ledge, it's really mm -hmm. kind of channeled all the way up from, from the top of the hill. Um, but Jared has worked on that bank when we had a, uh, that emergency washout with a, another flooding incident a few mm -hmm. years ago. Um, and that repair seems to have held up. So I, I would want him to look at, you know, pretty much the so the Buck Lake Brook as it enters into the village behind Ronnie Rathburns. Mm -hmm. and, and I know that the, that Ronnie and I think Chuck was involved, they were doing some work to kind of build up that stream bed and then That's some right. state guy told them to get Stop. out of the stream. Yeah. Yeah. But um, something needs to be done there. Water likes to go in a straight line and right at Ron's place it's taking a 90 degree turn so it's going to work into that bank as much as it can. And, you know, his house, his garage could. Um, he could did build a certain. build a wall. Yep. And I'm Jared is very familiar with that. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah. hopefully that uh, because yeah, it does hit the back of his garage mm -hmm. there, and the last flood sort of undermined the uh, his foundation. The but yeah. then uh, they built that cement wall. Mm -hmm. and 
It's a short-term fix. And I also have heard that VTRAN, they couldn't get the size culvert that they wanted for the village here, so they That's got a correct. smaller one? Yep, so really? it's undersized. Okay. No, no kidding. Not not already. <laughs> yeah, it was water it's, water it's, it's, I mean, it's, it's already, the design is, is prone to fail. Yeah. No, really. It's a channelized system, mm -hmm. straight line, with two connecting brook systems. It'll be overwhelmed in the next major mm -hmm. storm. Yeah. It's, mm -hmm. But it's not designed as a permanent fix, even though we threw a bunch of money at it. Really? No. Wow, sounds no, like the right sure. response to me, because <laughs> that was my response. Yeah, the time and the inconvenience that we all went through this small one. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. It's drastically undersized for, for the capacity of high-level flow. Paul did say that the last, the last big rain in December that it was right up to the top. And in fact, it actually did max the top. Wow. I have pictures of it. So, yeah. with a flood like we had in July, it will overtop again. Okay. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Well, we had to try. Yeah. And it's we did, you know, there. and it's better than what was there. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's not, it doesn't, it doesn't fix a long term problem. Mm -hmm. All right. Michael, anything else that you would like no, to add? That's it. I've taken that's great. Thank you very much for all the work. Mm -hmm. We appreciate it. Uh, Mr. Murphy, would you like to talk to us about town meeting prep? Sure. Sounds great. Uh, recently attended the moderator training mm -hmm. by Vermont League of Cities and Towns. It's an annual training done by Ed Chase. He's the longtime moderator of Westford. It's a good training. Um, I'm preparing myself personally, looking over Robert's rules and <laughs> looking back at Woodbury Town meetings. And this Thursday, we have pre-town meeting forum, informational forum for the town meeting, and I'll volunteer to moderate that if you'd like. Yes, please. Yep. Thank you. And preceding that, at 5 o'clock, the library is hosting what we call town government talk and we had one last year just prior to the informational meeting and the town government talk is to informally discuss experiences in town government public service ask questions what do public officials do how do what are the rules of order for uh, town meeting. So it's time for people to come together and just talk about public service. It's be difficult work. Yeah. And it's a time I think for people can come together and talk about the humanity of it. So the hardship, the humor, and the hardiness that it takes to sit in those chairs. So I thank you all here who are sitting in the chairs tonight. So that's Thursday at 5 8, five, pardon me. 5 p.m. 5 p.m. Yeah. It's going to be a long talk. Right. Yeah. A lot to talk about. 5 p.m. Town mm. government talk. 45 minutes. Mm. And then 6 o'clock, the pre town meeting forum. And uh, that's where mm. we can discuss the, uh, the items on the agenda for the town meeting, which is Saturday, March 2nd, 10 o'clock. At school, um, so let's go to. Him. I'm sorry. I have a question for him. Okay. Can you let him finish? Oh, oh sure. sure. If he's finished, if I he's not finished. Two items. One is um, I don't know if anyone has notified our state representatives. We usually have them come mm -hmm. visit us on town meeting day. I don't know if they know that we've switched it. So. If mm -hmm. no one has... We have. You have? I have. Okay, oh, okay. great. The other item is, um, Jim from HCTV called, and he asked about um, the arrangements for town meeting, how the uh, room is set up mm -hmm. you know, for purposes mm -hmm. of recording it. So I talked to him about it. I told him he should also talk to the town clerk and the select board. So... Mm -hmm. um, and I offered my opinion on something, and here, here it is. Whether we should have microphones for, for
for the assembly, for the, mm. the attendees at the meeting. In my opinion, we shouldn't because I think it's a bit disruptive to the flow of the meeting. Mm -hmm. People uh, maybe rise to stand, they're recognized, they have something to stay, uh, say. And I think our room is not so big that people can't just talk and be heard. I know there's an occasion where someone doesn't have a voice that carries through the room, but in, in my last couple of meetings that I've moderated, if anyone, if, if, I have, if I have a question, you know, whether someone can be heard, I will repeat it or ask if anyone needs mm -hmm. that repeated. So I think that's been an effective practice. And the microphones also may be intimidating to some people and also can disrupt the flow of the meeting. So that's my opinion on the microphones. Um, I think it's great when we have elementary school kids. Yeah, <laughs> I think it worked perfectly, and thank you very much for that. That was fantastic. Uh, the mock town meeting. The mock town meeting was yeah. wonderful. But well, I think you. that you're correct, in my personal opinion, that it's nice to just have people stand and be recognized. Um, it takes the pressure off a little bit, and, yeah. uh, and I think that that room works fairly well yeah. for people to. And and you're very good at repeating or summarizing mm -hmm. a point. So I think that we should stay with what we've had success with in the past. I have been someone who's tried to speak and nobody could hear me, and you have summarized my point so that everybody could hear. So I think that worked fine. And people can kind of be asked to speak up. I mean, you know, some people just get up and start talking, and they could put a little more oomph into it. <laughs> so I, I agree. Okay. I think we all agree. Yep. Great. And if, if anyone there has trouble hearing, um, you know, well, that, that's, I, I mean, I disagree a little bit because yeah. there are mm -hmm. people that do have trouble hearing mm -hmm. and there are people that have very soft voices. I know Skip Lindsay has always, mm. has a very soft voice and it's always been hard for people to understand him, but I do understand the disruption and the flow. Um, somebody mm -hmm. has to get the mic to the person. Um, we could have a couple of those energetic children that are there be mic runners. They would probably love doing that. I don't think we have cordless mics. Uh, no. Well, we do. Why? Mm -hmm. well, maybe, I don't know what we have. The school has a PA mm -hmm. system, but I don't know how. I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure the only one we've ever used is a corded mic. Yeah, you know, right. well, it's corded. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, so, yeah. yeah. In, although, yeah. many years ago, uh, it might have been eight or ten, if that's many, um, I was at a meeting where there were cordless mics, and, uh, but I that was before the, them. before the town, before the school had its own PA system. Okay. We used to hire somebody to come I in. See. We used Gagnons, to hire. Uh, huh? It was Gagnon's, I think, that would provide. Gagnon's, and the other one was um, Robin Grant. Uh -huh. At times yeah. came in, so yeah, we hired people to bring in their systems. Okay. But well, um, would, yeah. Michael's points. Well, yeah, I, I mean, just as long as everybody can hear, and if you have to repeat, that that works fine. But. I'm gonna let Miss Diana go, and then recognize. I know the school um, school board members want to say something, and you had mentioned that either it could go on the warning, or they could request. Obviously, there wasn't time to put it on the warning, but yes. but you are prepared for their request to yes. fit it in somewhere. Would they, you have an idea where it would be sure. good? Sure. Yes. They 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 sent me an email. They told me they would potentially mm -hmm. like to s say some words about the school. So, in my opinion, they could speak during the report of the town officials. They are town officers listed in the report. They don't they don't have a report. Uh, right. Published in the in the town report, but they mm -hmm. are town officers, mm -hmm. so I think that's one potential spot. Another is at the end under other business, non-binding business, and a third option would be uh, by unanimous consent, or mm -hmm. if we suspended the rules similarly, like we do when the legislators mm -hmm. come, we mm -hmm. find a logical point maybe between articles where they're recognized to speak. It seems like it would be a good 
thing to slot them in before we talk about the rest of the money issues, like maybe after the elections and before the budgets. I don't know. Wait till the end. I don't know how many people will be right. hanging yeah. around. But. Well, well, maybe, right. You don't think about that. that. The um, I think it's our Article Two. Article Two. The report to hear the reports of town officers. Right. Yeah. I think well, that would be a good spot for like it. A, Seems like a suitable spot there. I agree. To consider, except now we're, it's just to consider the printed report of the town officers. But anyways, yeah. I think it they still, are listed. They in are the listed in the report. Oh, definitely, yeah. yeah. Okay, but well, you wanted okay. to change it to not to say here the report, but well, to say the anyway, the point. No. The, po the po but point well, is, I think that there's a good spot for it, I, and I, I think just that like that's a great spot. Sure. <laughs> and I'd like to clarify one thing. What I talked about a month or a month and a half ago was not making it a question, what shall the town do mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. with regard to the report? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and as VLCT recommended, not to state it as a question, right. but to state it as we do now, to hear the report. Yeah. And I think it's fine for us to use that opportunity to yeah. allow them, as officers, to speak. Great. So, <laughs> I agree. Okay. Well, good. Although so, I must so say, okay. I, I think I, ju okay. I just need to say, I am only the moderator through and up until Article One. I am. My term expires there. So that that yep. being said, there. Yeah. Don't say you're not that, running. No. He says he doesn't get to run. No. I'm just saying. <laughs> I can't speak beyond Article One because that's, you know, uh, that's where my term ex that's where my term expired. Uh, you might yeah. expect you might expect to uh, be nominated okay. again. Right. Okay, just so you know. I'll be ready. Just, 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 just. Okay, John, okay. I'm sorry. You have. I was going to speak to the sound situation mm -hmm. yes, please. because uh, we were in the gym. What was it a week and a half ago? Mm -hmm. Uh, for the fireman's banquet, and yeah, some people's voices just don't carry. The acoustics in that room aren't very good. So, uh, regardless of how it's accommodated, whether it's expecting the per you know, the question to be repeated, and there's you know, it's there needs to be um, some people's voices just don't carry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so right. that just has to be like Paul gets up there and he can go and his voice can carry through but you know right. if Cindy he can carry through walls anything, actually yeah it's incredible <laughs> or uh, you, or um, you know Steve Freihofer you know we had a difficulty hearing him until we got the things working so it's definitely uh, saying uh, expecting people can try to speak up but some people it just doesn't work particularly well so just for what it's worth so maybe there could be an option you know, well, we could have a mic. We could have a mic set up. There are two mics, right, on both sides. Two what? Two wired mics. Two wired mics. There. And so we could have I, that. I get that there is some disruption to that, but well, some people want to be able to speak to them for themselves. So we could have those set up, and it's people's option to take advantage of them. I'm Steve. plugging those refrigerators help too. Yes. Make yeah. Yeah. That does make a difference, the white noise. Yeah. The, 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 the white noise. Do <laughs> you have a microphone when you moderate, right? Or are you. No, nope. you don't. No. Your voice just carries really well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. His voice works just fine for that. Good job. Mm -hmm. Especially halfway through the meeting, right? <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. Because we did have the uh, refrigerator freezer unplugged for mm -hmm. that event. And, you know, it helps, but you know, some people's just their voice tone doesn't doesn't go doesn't go. Yeah. Nobody can ever hear me ever. Yeah. Yeah. We're doing and, fine. And older ears. <laughs> it's a small room. Either yes. And don't pick up all the all the voices equally. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, Stephen, thank you very much for everything. Okay. Appreciate well, all the work. Thank you. Looking forward to it. And thanks again for mock town meeting. I know my kids my kids really enjoyed it. Joel so. really enjoyed it. Yeah. I think Ryan would probably enjoyed it as well. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was great. Yeah. Okay. Um, 
we have what is nearing a final draft of the personnel policy. Mm -hmm. And there was one remaining question for VLCT, and that was about how much vacation and or sick leave can be uh, accrued and um, their wording from a previous review that they did was a little uh, unclear because it's, it made it sound like in both cases you could, um, it said no, however, that an employer is not allowed to limit the total number of hours of leave that an employee accrues over multiple years. Yeah, it's too bad. And that was so. Anyways, the person I finally made contact with, Fred Saintink at uh, VLCT, the person who was their expert in this area, is not there anymore. Uh, they don't have any. Yeah, they they don't have someone to answer the specific question. He said it. It seems odd to him that it says that because. At VLCT, they have limits. You know, he knows that they, they have limits. And so it does seem like they're... Anyways, he strongly suggested that we get another legal review. What? Yeah, he said, he suggested we've that done we... This, we've already done this twice. Okay, well, for one, okay. For one week. Did we do a, a run it by a lawyer, though? Or? We have made quite a few changes from... Yes, we have, that's true. Yeah. He did suggest that the law has changed, so it might be a good idea to just run it by a lawyer again. It, I wouldn't run it by our, I don't think our regular attorney is a specialist, but he did give me the name of somebody who they work with who is very familiar with things like this. Diana, were you, I guess when I saw your email about that, I thought that you were talking about just running that one question by a lawyer, but are you talking about running the whole thing well, by a lawyer? We're gonna I, do I, it I was, all, maybe I was well. mostly concerned about the one question because I yeah. think everything else has been vetted over and over. Okay. But, that's, but I just wanted to pass on the advice from VLCT that uh, <laughs> because things have changed and this has been going on for years now it might be a good idea to just run it by this guy one more time you know i did, did never did get a uh, clarification on the it sounds like they didn't answer your initial question either right yeah right okay yeah so i just i could just do that and just find out what they think about that accumulation question. Well, it's not ready to be signed tonight, so yeah. no matter what, it's going to be up to the next board. The, uh, I did not get uh, the, the thing that was confusing to me was what you finally ended up with as far as the accumulation of annual leave. Uh, did you not see the, did, did you not see the the document that I sent you on Friday? I guess not. No. Well it doesn't sound like it. No. I don't think Shoot. I saw anything from you, Chris, either. Oh gracious me. Uh, but yes, when yeah, I, when, we, when we were at our special meeting on Tuesday, I said I'd send you something by Friday, mm -hmm. and I did, mm -hmm. which included all, mm -hmm. all that. Um, I'll send it again, since we're back at this. Yeah, well, what this... Um, because then, I mean, if we, if, if, if we have a... If, if we can have all the um, amendments in there, and we feel reasonable about it, mm -hmm. then we could have one more special meeting and sign it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it gets dumped on the next select board. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, we're so close. It doesn't I feel know. like whatever happens, it could be so fast. We just have one question. We just have to yeah, just answer that and then an sign it. You so know? would you ask the specific question okay. of the attorney? I will. And then I will resend my okay. additional comments. But what I would love to have is this version then. Okay. The, and this is the one I sent out to you 
after I finished with all of Lizzie's with, with Lizzie. so yeah, it hasn't so changed. So this it is hasn't everything changed we then. talked about. So it hasn't changed since then. Uh huh. Okay. Well, it has. Uh, yeah. It has has it? If it no, has. I mean, I just made her changes. Okay. Then sure. all, all right, with our changes, I put notes of our changes. All yeah. of our collective changes. Right. Yeah. And yeah. so that's the one yeah. I commented on. So the uh, uh, sick leave. The, what confused me is this: this an employee may accrue no more than 160 hours of vacation time. The maximum accrued time for a part-time employee should be prorated. Okay. Any additional unused accrued vacation leave may be used within 12 months of the July 1 cutoff. After 12 months, an employee may be paid out for up to 80 hours of accrued vacation time above the 160-hour maximum. Any remaining unused time will be forfeited. forfeited. Accrued vacation time of up to 160 like hours about, may be paid out when an employee terminates their employment with the town. It's, it's Does that 12, make sense? 12 months of, from, the, oh. from the following From year. the following year. Right. So you have yeah. 12 months to use it. You have another year use it? to use it. Right. Yeah. And then, and then, it's, and then gone. it's gone. Or not gone or because you can pay out. It's, pay it's, half, it's either basically. paid or you get you, you get half get or you get paid out. Yeah, it's not going to be all paid out. It's not no, all paid out. You paid out half. half. You pay basically, it's eighty out of one sixty. Well, it's not really half though. No, it's not. It's, it, it caps out at two. At two. Mm -hmm. Two weeks. Right. Because some guys only get two weeks. Right. So it wouldn't be half. It That's would never be half. Be, right. So it's better yeah. to make that clarification that it's that it maxes out at two. Weeks. At two weeks. And that is how it's said in there. I just said half because okay. I was thinking half. Gotcha. But yeah, it's a, that is how it's stated, though. Okay. okay. Yeah. So this makes sense to all of you. It doesn't make sense to yeah. me, but that's just. <laughs> okay. I'll send you my comments anyway. Okay. Thank and, you, um, please. And yeah. then yeah, just resend them. You want this? Mm -hmm. I absolutely do not want any more paper. <laughs> Are you sure? Okay. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Uh, all right, so I'll send you that, and then you can send that question to VLCG okay. if you're willing to. to, to ask the, it's not to VLCG, I mean, but it's an attorney. To, to our attorney, or an attorney. Um, ask a question. I have a question before we adjourn. I should yes. have asked earlier in a meeting, but Please. where are we at with the car on Old Quarry Road? Uh, well, so today is the day where the window is up for them to have done something with it, so I can call Gates. I have to send you the letter, so it's in the record. I can okay. call Gates tomorrow and see what we can do with getting it out of the way. Okay, and then the cost of towing it is on the town? It's on the town. Okay. And Gates won't pay. Like, would they pay for scrap metal? Like. Well, I don't think that we should go right to scrapping this person's car. I think, yeah, the standard is for somebody to take it and haul it away, and then the people, if they want the car, are contacted that it has been removed, right. mm -hmm. and then they have a certain amount of time to respond, not respond. To so much to the town, they have to go to get and pay mm -hmm. the wrecker or whatever the fees were to haul that thing away. Okay. They have to pay that, and then they can get their car back. And if they don't, if then they don't, then there's a window in which I think window basically, window yeah, yeah, there's okay. a certain amount of time that it has to sit there. Yeah, uh -huh. I, and I don't. I'm sorry, I don't know that. And if they go pay the fee to get it back, do we? Does that come back to us for the cost of having it towed in the first place? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. I mean, and I don't think they, they want the car. No, I don't think they do either. I'm yeah. just curious. Like, I don't well, know I'm how just it works. Pay, pay to have it towed instead of them having it towed, which. They're not going to do so. Right. So if we if they never go collect the car, then the cost falls on the town, and we just mm -hmm. eat it think, or whatever. Yeah, I mean, I think the person hauling it away is going to want to be paid. Regardless. Yeah. So yeah. it would be the town basically would be getting reimbursed if the people ever do go on. Correct. Okay. That's the way it typically works. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do they? Do they? They don't care about this car. I mean, they have given us no response. Oh. So we don't know that. We don't know that. <laughs> we have no idea. Right, right. I was just going to say, if they, if we they have, just don't care about it, they just can't, don't have the means of getting rid of it. We have had absolutely zero responses to okay. our attempts. Okay. So we got to move forward with, with our plan. Because mm -hmm. it, it really needs to go. So right one time, like a million years ago, when I went and talked to them with Josh Korn, mm -hmm. we did talk about getting that car out of there. And they did say, the woman said she was going to look into getting it towed. Mm. So I am 
-hmm. taken from that that they don't actually want I just it. Want, I wonder if it's it's filled with garbage or it's they're I using it for no storage idea. or something. I, 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 I don't really know. I'm sorry, no, I haven't investigated the car specifically. <laughs> Um, There's a lot of cars up there, actually. So yeah, yeah. Sure like, let's not get into that. We're setting okay. an ugly precedent with this in the first place, yeah. just to be honest, mm -hmm. because there are <coughs> more than a few cars in mm -hmm. town right of ways. Mm -hmm. Right. And so we're setting ourselves up for an interesting scenario with this into the future. But uh, oh. this one is um, been an issue, so we, we this tried. is the one that we're going to start with. We tried doing a process, a legal process. And we did a legal process. It, yeah, that's what I mean. We didn't try. It didn't work. We did it. Yeah, but if it, it doesn't happened. work, if we don't follow through on it, that's... Right. Even worse. Well, yeah. 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 another precedent. Yeah. Yeah. Even worse. Oh. <laughs> Maybe I'll start a towing company. <laughs> 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 I recommend it. Mm -hmm. I have a place to store them. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah right. That's another copy. Uh, I don't Okay. Um, we have finished our published agenda at this point. Um, I'd like a motion to adjourn the meeting at 7.50 p.m. I'll make a motion. I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Okay, the meeting of the Woodbury Select Board for February 26th is now adjourned. And thank you for your service. Thank you, everybody.